Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at some metrics, four of which you can see, one of which is now missing from the main score screen but still exists in the graphs. What I'm talking about is resource collection rate. Resource collection rate is necessary to put average unspent resources into perspective. If we don't have our resource collection rate, average unspent resources becomes meaningless. So let's say there was a six pool game of course it would be against a zerg and not a terran but let's say that there was a six pool game and i left as soon as the zerglings came in because i was fed up and i rage quit 334 unspent resources in that game is pretty bad but if i played a long game and i had 2000 average resource collection rate and i had 334 average unspent resources that would be a phenomenal game the point being that we need perspective the simplest solution to this problem would be to throw up the resource collection rate that is now in the graph section. Also, put it in the performance section so that we can see the comparison ourselves. The better solution, in my opinion, would be to put spending quotient or spending skill directly here so we can know exactly how well we're doing. Moving on. Time supply capped is exactly that. I tested it. It is the total second spent during the match at supply cap exactly unfortunately this means that there's going to be time recorded where we are not supply capped but the game thinks we're supply capped example would be if we had a gateway and a nexus for production we were building a probe and we were building a zealot we had a pylon on the way we timed it out so that our pylon finished before slightly before or at the same time that the probe and zealot finished this wouldn't be a supply block but maybe I would be at 18 of 18 supply during that moment in time. It would still count towards being supply capped, unfortunately. The thing that we can take away from this is don't go for zero. Zero is not necessary. Zero is not perfect. Zero is not even good. Zero is not supposed to even happen in this stat the way it's being recorded now. So don't go for zero, but Definitely use this to see how well you're doing as far as supply is concerned. If you're at four minutes one game and three minutes the next game, that's a phenomenal improvement. Keep going, get it as low as you can, but don't stress over the zero section. And we're gonna have a similar idea here. Idle production time is going to happen. Having zero at idle production time isn't really the ideal. It's not going to be efficient play if having literally zero idle production time because it can't happen in most situations it's impossible so don't worry about it instead same thing you want to say okay i was seven minutes out of production time this time and i was six minutes the next time i improved continue improving idle production time is a really really great metric and i'm super pumped that blizzard is introducing it there's one small error total seconds buildings or larva spent idle so that means hatcheries. And that means whenever I'm not building a queen, the hatchery is considered idle. This skews the data and makes it really difficult to use idle production time on the score screen as a meaningful metric for Zerg players. What I suggest is instead of measuring how often a queen is or is not being produced, if we could measure how often or how many seconds in the game a hatchery is producing or not producing a larva. For those of you who are unfamiliar, if a hatchery has three or more larvae, it does not produce any more by itself. But if it has less than three larvae over time, I believe it's 15 seconds, it produces larvae. So that would be something that would be useful to know for idle production time on a hatchery, not a queen. So if we could switch that up, use production of larvae out of a hatchery instead of production of queens out of a hatchery, that would make it useful for zergs. As of right now, it's really useful for Protoss and Terran. It works for warp ins, it works for all of the production, and uh, it's going to be a great metric for everyone that's not a Zerg to use. APM is still APM in Heart of the Swarm. It's buggy as hell. A couple of games I had 356. This game I had 93. That's more my usual APM. So don't stress about it. I'm sure Blizzard's on top of it. That being said, so excited so excited that blizzard is looking into metrics and 
trying to provide more meaningful metrics. And there, this is a huge improvement over what we've had in the past. And hopefully, they'll continue down this path and keep making the metrics in StarCraft II better so we can all track our performance in a meaningful way. Hope you learned something. Uh, hope you had a good time. And uh, I hope I'll see you again soon.